It's that time of year again where things are heating up and we are looking for ways to cool off while engaging our kids in some fun outside play. And today I am rounding up our absolute favorite kid tested and approved outdoor water toys. If you're new here, my name is Rachel from The Confused Mom. Welcome to my channel. I share baby and toddler product reviews, activities, as well as Montessori at home tips. I reviewed our favorite indoor water toys a couple weeks ago. These are great for the bath, around the home, and can also be used in the pool or at the beach or the backyard or wherever too. So definitely be sure to go ahead and check those out if you're looking for some smaller items. I'll link that in the description box as well as links to shop all of the things I'm talking about today and the blog post version of this video, which allows you to price comparison shop the picks from various retailers. Let's jump in with our newest addition that my kids are obsessed with and has had them outside for at least three hours a day since we got it. And that is this inflatable bounce house meets a splash pad slash kitty pool sprinkler situation here. It's incredibly easy to set up. You just attach the included blower here and it inflates within a minute. And then for the water feature, you attach this tube to a hose and then Velcro it onto the structure. It is so simple and such a game changer. Our neighbors have a regular little text bounce house that is a bigger service area for jumping, but the kids are pretty much never in it. So I was a little hesitant with getting this one, but everybody in the neighborhood has been back here lately. It's suitable for kids up to 80 pounds. When I tried to jump in it myself, as well as one of the 11 year olds, we were able to go in it without deflating it or causing any safety issue. However, our weight didn't really make it much of a bounce house. We kind of just sunk in a little bit and we both got kicked out. It's a decent size too. Our backyard here in this house is pretty small and we were able to set it up comfortably. You can actually bring it indoors during the winter and use the inflatable pool portion as a ball pit too. So on that note, we should talk about splash pads and inflatable pools. So last summer we had this inflatable pool, which I thought was awesome at the time. It does come in at a fraction of the cost. However, the setup for it and takedown of it is a lot more labor intensive than the new bounce house that we got because you actually have to use an electric pump to set up each section individually. So you have to blow up the ring, the water slide, the back pool, and the front pool. So when we set that up, it was up for at least a week. You were not taking it back down. And I found that the plastic material of the inflatable pool, when we left it out in the Florida sun, became a lot more hot to touch and uncomfortable compared to the bounce house, which stayed cool. So kind of just keep that in mind. It does come out a much lower price point. In exchange for that lower price point, you're also going to have a heavier cleanup and setup period. That said, my kids loved it. There were no issues with it. The sprinkler feature is awesome. And I did like that it had two different sections of the pool. That way if like the kids were just not in a good mood that day, didn't want to play together, we could separate them out easily. Whereas the bounce house, everyone's going to be playing together all the time. Splash pads are another awesome option for the backyard. This one right here is on sale right now for over 50% off. My friend has this one. We are huge fans of it. The one that we personally had last year was this $8 octopus one, which is currently unavailable, unfortunately. But I'm going to leave a link to it anyway in case it comes back up. And I have an entire blog post reviewing the best splash pads and inflatable pools for toddlers. I will link it. But basically, what I really like about splash pads is if you don't have a mud kitchen, it can really easily create a DIY mud kitchen in your backyard. So when we had the octopus one, it would end up overflowing with water, creating some muddy patches in our backyard. So we just brought out some spare kitchenware and the kids went crazy. Unfortunately, I didn't take any videos of this. So you're just gonna have to take my word for that. It is a nice budget hack. Definitely at the very least, I would get a splash pad. And if you're gonna upgrade it, I'd go with that bounce house. Another one of our favorite budget outdoor water toys is going to be a sprinkler. Tried and true classic summer item. And there's two styles I wanna talk to you guys about. It's a simple oxalating fan, but this is great because you can actually water your lawn with it too. This little slide area right here allows you to control how far spreading the fan spray is. So if you have a lot of kids, you can make it go really, really wide or adults don't want to get sprayed with it too. You can tighten up that spray range. Now, if you have a smaller backyard or you just want something cuter and more kitschy, there are these character themed little spinning ones. So these are a lot less durable, but they're also more affordable. And these are really great for small backyards or if there are adults around that don't want to risk getting sprayed. They both provide a pretty different experience. I personally prefer the 
classic oxalating fan style. It just encourages more running and bigger movements to get all that toddler energy out. Next is going to be Mud Kitchen. So like I said, you could easily DIY this with random kitchenware and a splash pad in your backyard. But if you want something a little bit more formal that will be able to transition more easily into the cooler months, then a Mud Kitchen is where it's at. These are honestly one of my favorite outdoor toys in general. They provide hours of fun, creativity, and work so many different skills. I have an entire blog post talking about all the different kinds as well as a really detailed FAQ section which includes how to DIY running water into your mud kitchen if it didn't come with that feature as well as making food out of rocks and so much more so it's definitely worth giving a read after this. This one here is the TP Toys Deluxe version which has a watering bucket. I love that it's big enough for multiple kids and our friends even use food coloring to dye the dirt and make some really gorgeous cakes and cupcakes. They're a little bit older than my kids so they can handle that specificity. It's one of those toys that is just going to last for all of those early childhood years so well. So open-ended, so many things they can do with it. I will say not all mud kitchens are created equal and a couple of things to pay really close attention to. If you have multiple kids, is it big enough to hold all of the kids? Are they going to be pushing each other out of the way? Does it have storage for all of the supplies that will inevitably go with it? And how can you add a running water situation to it? Now with that said, in that blog post, there's some really cool ones that even have like plexiglass for warmeries or plexiglass to double as art easels. So definitely head to that blog post. Next up is going to be this specific kickboard. So we discovered this water toy during my daughter's swim class last year. And it's shockingly a favorite amongst kids and the whole family. For new swimmers, it definitely builds up their strength and can even act as a safety raft if they end up in the middle of the pool. So my daughter will want to follow the kids, but she still is working on her stamina. So she'll leave it at the top of the pool, dive down, get the diving toys, play whatever they're playing. And then when she needs a break, rather than having to swim all the way back to the pool wall, she'll hold on to this. My kids and I also love to sit on it and try to surf it. Parents will love the price tag and the fact that you guys can use it yourself as a nice workout because it only comes in one size. But I will really stress, do not get sucked in when you're at like Whole Foods or something and they have the cute little Melissa and Doug dolphin one that has no handles. Don't buy that one. It is a waste of money. My kids both really disliked it. It does not encourage proper form. On that same note, let's talk diving toys. There is no shortage of diving toys out there on the market, but I do want to bring your attention to a couple in particular. First are going to be these mermaids, which kids absolutely love. If you're child is not ready to dive to the bottom of a pool yet. They are open-ended enough that they can be used on the water surface for creative pretend play. And I find my kids really just love diving under the water for these more than say those diving gems that you get in kits like this one. But I do still think kits like this one are worth it. So if you are going to buy one of those done for you Amazon diving toy kits, what I strongly suggest is getting the ones that have these rings in them, which is another little tip we picked up from our swim instructors. Most most of the diving toys in there are pretty basic but the rings are a little bit different. Basically, they have a little floating device here which keeps them suspended in the middle of the water and provide an added challenge of swimming through them without touching the sides. Serves as a really great way to refine their swimming skills, gain more confidence, and kids also just love holding the hoop and then like flipping through it. All around, really good one. Next up are gonna be water guns. And these have come such a long way since we were kids and there are three different styles I want to talk about here. We have the traditional basic like $1 cheap kind and I'm a huge fan of these for young toddlers because they are small enough and easy enough for little hands to manage. The one caution I will say with using these, do not let them sit out because <laughs> inevitably for young toddlers, they will end up trying to suck the water out or shoot the water into their mouth. And if you've left it out, moldy water, just a really yucky situation. So if you do get those, definitely be on top of keeping them clean. I suggest having clear ones like these or lighter color ones. So that way you could hold it up to the light and see if there's any discoloration happening inside. Next are actually these pool floats. If you have a hesitant swimmer, this is a 
great way for them to still feel a part of the action in the pool without pushing themselves too far out of their comfort zone. Next are these little water gun backpacks and I think these are so cute. You can get them in fire to fire themed ones. They also have a Paw Patrol themed one that's like a rescue one. They use a push thrust water gun instead of a push button. So younger toddlers can definitely figure out how to shoot the water out of it. I like this too because you can go ahead and soap up a play car or a play house and have them use the water gun backpacks to clean them or put out a fire. It's a nice different feel to a traditional water gun that also adds a little bit of whimsy and pretend play element to it. Next are going to be water balloons and obviously these are a no-brainer so I'm going to give you guys a few activities to do with water balloons. So you can play catch or toss these back and forth. You can put them into a bucket to teach a sink or float lesson and you can even put toys inside of them or just water and hang them from trees and then have kids hit them like little water balloon pinatas. And of course you can use them in sensory bins. You can have kids paint them or put shaving cream on them and have them shave them, coloring them with markers or bath paint and even using them in an obstacle course. So what we did here, we had the kids spin around these little tubes because we didn't have a bat. Then they had to take a water balloon, place it in a spoon, jump over an obstacle, hand it to their partner. You had to keep the water balloon balanced on the spoon while doing a hot scotch run, throw the water balloon at the other team, crawl through a tunnel and then get to their tree where they had to hit the pinata water balloon. So tons of ways you can use water balloons beyond a five second water balloon fight. And then next of course are gonna be a simple water table. Again, I have an entire buying guide on water tables. These are personally my least favorite outdoor water toy but I know they are so popular so I'm including them. We have tested out so many at friends houses. There are three I want to bring your attention to here. Number one is going to be this one which is great because it easily folds up for small spaces, can be used indoors or outdoors, and has two different sections if you have two different kids or if you want to set up a dry and wet activity. Next is going to be this one, which is also pretty similar to the last one, but it also includes a little splash pad to go underneath it. And the table, again, has two sections, but the legs of it raise up or down. So if you do have a baby around, you can actually place the one section all the way down to the floor. Lastly, there are going to be more of these like picnic table style ones that have two different bins and these just provide a much more open-ended experience and I love that you can go ahead and seal this back up and use this as a regular outdoor table through the seasons. If you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, drop me a comment below with what your family's favorite outdoor water toy is or which of these you're most excited to try. Be sure to go back and check out that previous video on indoor water toys which can also be used outside and as always my name's Rachel. Have a good one!